Hey, it's Steve from Objects Unlimited. I'm gonna show you how we 3D scan artifacts. Now in a museum, the artifacts can raise from something very small to very large. We're gonna sc uh, scan this bone. This is an alligator skeleton. It's actually 3D printed, but very similar to a standard bone. When you 3D scan, there's really a couple steps. One is to scan the object, then you register the scans, align them, stitch them together into a mesh. We're gonna go through this process. It's pretty quick. So what I'm doing is keeping the skull here in the field of view of the scanner and I'm trying to capture images um, around and across. So you can see that I'm going uh, quite quickly. Part of that is because I have a lot of scan experience, but a lot of it is because the, the scanner is just really easy to use. I haven't really lost tracking. If I lose tracking and I don't know where I'm at, I can point the scanner back at the object and it will continue to scan. So usually we go around a couple times to try and get underneath uh, and into small areas. Then we're going to flip it over uh, scan it again and align it. So once we've done the scan, the next step is to process the scan. So I've done a high definition rebuild on these three scans. I'm going to run a registration algorithm on these. What this is going to do, um, as it's scanning, it's tracking frame by frame by frame. Global registration kind of puts it all into the same uh, reference space. So I do this on each individual scan. I'm going to go and eliminate the background from each scan. Then I'm going to stick the three scans together and align them into, into a final mesh. It doesn't take very long. I'm expecting this will be about a six minute process from start to finish. So first step is to use my eraser tool and eliminate the background. So I'm gonna select what I need and uh, erase everything I don't. I'm also going to uh, use, take my plane here, eliminate that. So now I have this object out in space. I'm not as worried about the, uh, missing the bottom of it because I have that uh, on a different scan. So I'm just going to Eliminate these little outliers just to make things faster and on to the next scan. The same thing here, I'm going to select what I want, invert and erase, use my cutoff plane to select the base. I left the base in when I registered because there's a lot of text on the base and that actually helps the scanner uh, align where it is, but I clearly don't want it when I'm building uh, the scan file. So I'm just gonna remove a little bit here. And last one, so sometimes uh, you'll see this kind of thing happen where there is a bit of a misalignment. So if that's the case, maybe because the turntable is going a little too quickly, uh, I'm going to try and run global registration on this particular scan again. And it's uh, it's gotten much better. There's one little floating frame out here, but I'm just going to eliminate that. So uh, one thing with Artex software, boy oh boy, the algorithms are amazing. And uh, trust global registration, it can fix a lot of scanning errors. Um, Having used a few other 3D scanning softwares, there is absolutely nothing like Artex Studio in terms of ease of use and, and quality of results. Just getting rid of the base here. And now we have our three individual scans that we're going to align together. We use Artex alignment tool for this, and it's really quite simple. You select your first scan. This is raw scan data. You select the second scan that you want to align to it and you select common points. That point here is kind of like that point. That point there is kind of there. You don't have to be super accurate because the algorithm is going to use the uh, geometry to align it. So now that piece is aligned, I'm going to add the second part to it. Uh, and I can't um, emphasize enough how excellent Artex Studio software is for this kind of thing compared to uh, really anything else that I've used. It's so easy and it just works. So I've got all three scans aligned now. I'm going to run a registration on these scans together as opposed to running them separately. So that is happening now. That operation is finished. You'll see all these spikes around the object. I can eliminate those, but I <clears throat> also know that the um, diffusion is going to fix that also. So I'm going to just change settings here and run this. So this is the uh, I guess the moment of truth or the time when you're watching your screen and just uh, waiting for that scan to pop up. And as I said, a bit of a goosebump moment when that sound um, uh, plays to say the algorithm is done and you see an excellent mesh sitting on the screen. So watching the, the top bar there transition across, um, it is important to have a really good computer when you're doing these kind of things. I definitely recommend at least 64 gigabytes of RAM and at least an eight gigabyte video card. If you're using Artec Leo, I would recommend 128 gigabytes of RAM and maybe a 16 gigabyte video card. Um, you, you do create a lot of data when you're when you're scanning, and it's good to have that um, 
Another pro tip is that our tech software reads and writes to the disk drive a lot, so using a solid state uh, drive as opposed to a hard disk can really increase your uh, computer performance and your scan speed. Um, the speed is not really the time it takes to acquire the scan, it's start to finish. So there's the sound and there's the mesh. Look at that. That is done in start to finish a couple minutes. Truly incredible. So I can run some other tools. There's a, a little bit of a couple floaters out here in space. So we're going to run a small objects filter to get rid of that. And uh, we can decimate the mesh if we choose to, to get a smaller file. But if you see here, that is a pretty incredible representation of that skull in a very short period of time. Can also add color to it. So if I were to texture it, I just choose the model and the frames I used and we can apply some color to it. So one thing you may notice is that there's some pitting on this alligator skull here that may not uh, translate it to the scan. Frankly, not really a surprise because I was using Arctic Eva. Arctic Eva is a little bit of a larger field of view scanner and let me go a little bit faster. But here's the great thing. What I can do now is I can actually go over top of this with the spider scanner, which has a, a higher detail and a better, a smaller field of view and, and augment this a little bit more. So we will, we will do that now. Uh, Artex scanners all work with the same uh, power cables and data cables, so I can just unplug from the one scanner and plug in the other one. I can e I can do this in the same uh, project folder, and uh, and all the data will work together and uh, and align really really nicely. It's a great feature when you're scanning something. Um, say it's a, a a sculpture or an outcropping where there's a gross feature like a rock and then a small feature like a carving. Uh, we very often will scan the, the gross area with a Leo or with an Eva and then the smaller areas uh, with the spider to get the detail. The challenge is field of view. The field of view on the scanner is about this big. So scanning a large object can take a really long time. The depth is also not super deep, so getting inside of holes uh, can be a challenge. That's why we sometimes combine different scanners together. So I'm just going to start scanning this guy here with, with the spider and then we'll stick everything together. But that should be sufficient enough right there to uh, significantly enhance our model. So let's just process this as well. So we're going to first run a registration algorithm. And I'm then going to eliminate the background using the eraser and the cutoff plane tool. Now what I might do is just push this through to a mesh just so you can see the, the difference. So I'm going to erase that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to align this scan to the scans that we had previously. So again, using my align tool, the first three scans are already aligned. I'm just going to add the fourth one here. So again, very straightforward. This point here is kind of this point here. Here's sort of here. Here's sort of here. And let the algorithm do its magic. That's aligned. We'll run a registration algorithm for all the scans together. And then we're going to push this through to a mesh and we'll see what the difference is. And again, a few, uh, few seconds of processing and then the moment of truth and we'll see what it looks like. Um, really great to be able to merge multiple scans together from different scanners. I've done as many as three. Usually we use two, either Leo and Spider or Spider and Eva. We've also emerged uh, Leo scans with Ray. Ray is a LiDAR scanner for larger areas. So um, Artec gives you tremendous flexibility across the whole product line to be able to mix and match their products to, to find the right need. There's no one scanner that will do everything from this big up to, you know, 100 meters uh, in length. So you have to pick and choose. Generally, I use the bread box rule. If it's smaller than a bread box, spiders, spiders the right scanner. If it's bigger than a bread box and smaller than a car, I usually use Eva. If I'm on the road though, I'll use Spider Leo every time because Leo has no wires and it's just the easiest thing uh, for me to go to a customer with really just a suitcase for the scanner, hit go and start scanning within a minute. Um, that can be very satisfying. So you can see the difference here, adding the spider details versus using just Eva. That's just Eva. Let me turn off the color here. That's just the Eva scan. And then the spider actually catches uh, a lot more um, detail on this artifact. Maybe not as necessary to catch underneath uh, the teeth, but we could certainly do that. So you may ask, why didn't you scan the whole thing with spider? So there's a couple of reasons why I didn't do that. 
One is these internal channels here are very difficult to get at with a spider with with the field of depth of this scanner. I could do it, but it might take a little bit longer. Um, it's great to be able to scan it in you know 30 or 40 seconds with the Eva, and then even use that data to help align the spider data will give me um, better final results. So I'm quite happy with this scan of this uh, the skeleton in only really a few minutes. Um, and you know, we could share this online as soon as uh, right now. The choice of scanner really depends on what the artifact is that you're doing. So a lot of times people do uh, purchase a, a combination with two different scanners so they can cover the range of from one inch up to, you know, say uh, 30 feet or so. Um, but really you focus on the 80% solution. If most of your parts are, are, are good to scan with the spider, then you partner with someone like us to scan the rest of them. There's no one product that does everything. So it's choosing the product that meets most of your needs and having resources. Like we provide at Objects Unlimited with our scanning services to help support you in those cases where uh, your equipment can't meet all your needs.